Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Myatt from Keller, Texas. Today is Friday, November 20th, 2015. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're hearing so much talk these days about Islam. And the world will tell you how peaceful it is. Our current Obama administration will tell you they're peaceful, they're loving, they're kind, they've built the fabric of America, that we've had Muslims in our history ever since America has been created, all, all these kind of things, which a lot of lies we hear about Islam. We're hearing more about it. Uh, attack in Mali today. We're, we're hearing that the killers were yelling Allahu Akbar, just like the ones in Paris, just like the ones who took down the World Trade Centers, just like every Muslim terrorist has ever. They shout Allahu Akbar, which means my God is greater. My God is greater. It's almost an insecurity they have, saying, no, my God is greater than yours, and I'll prove it because I'll kill you. See, my God must be greater because I killed you. I have to remind people, Jesus told us of these kind of people in John 16, verse 1. He said, These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he does God service. And these things they will do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. They do this because they don't know God. They don't know God, the real God, the true God, the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who sent his son Jesus to die on the cross that we might be forgiven of our sins, that we might be cleansed of all of our wickedness, our unrighteousness, our evilness, that we might have everlasting life with God the Father. You see, there is no salvation in Islam. It's a works-based cult. They think, oh, if you do good, if you follow the five pillars of Islam, if you give your money, if you pray five times a day, if you do the Hajj at least once in your life, if you do all these things, then you'll go to paradise and have 72 virgins. I'm sorry, those are all lies. Coming from the one, Allah, in the Quran, who brags about being the greatest deceiver of all, and sadly billions of people have blindly followed this false prophet Muhammad to the pits of hell. How many are languishing in hell today, angry that they were lied to, and they followed blindly after these lies, only to end up in the pits of destruction? People, this is why I speak against Islam. So some will come to know the truth, so that come, some will come to know the light of truth that is Jesus Christ, so they'll understand there's only one way to God the Father. Jesus said so himself in John 14, 6, my absolute most favorite verse in all of Scripture. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God the Father but by me. Very clear, very plain. There's no other way but through Jesus Christ. People need to understand this. The, the, the terrorists in Paris, some, what, 129 killed or so? More than 300 wounded? Several of those wounded are facing death? Of course, we know it was ISIS. President of France called it an act of war and started bombing ISIS locations in Syria. Oh... ISIS suicide bombers killed 40 more in Beirut, 20 in Baghdad. These Paris attacks aren't even the most deadly in the last few days. That Russian airliner brought down by ISIS killed over 224 people, I believe. Of course, our president was in the Philippines while I was at the White House. And by the way, the Philippines are pretty much under the control of ISIS in many places. Obama, you recall a few years ago, called ISIS the JV team, you know, junior varsity, saying, oh, we've got them contained, and oh, they show up in Paris and kill 127 people. Doesn't seem contained to me. 
ISIS is active all over the place. Libya, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, Tunisia, Gaza, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Lebanon, Jordan, the Philippines. They're very active. There's ISIS cells in America. In all 50 states, the FBI has, has admitted. ISIS terrorist cells in all 50 states in America. You think they're here to promote peace? Because after all, the world claims they're the religion of peace. They are not. They don't know peace. They have no peace because they don't know the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the true Jesus, the Son of the living God, the one who gave his life that we may have everlasting life. God in flesh, the Savior of the world, the Messiah that was prophesied in the Testaments of old. ISIS has groups in Germany, England, all over Europe, India, France, United States, Canada. The Bible warns us that evil will increase in the last days, in the days prior to the return of Jesus Christ, with nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. See, kingdom against kingdom means it's within the same nation. Hmm. Jesus tells us in Revelation 2, uh, Revelation 2, verse, verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. <laughs> a crown of life. A crown of life. Paul says, In all things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. So we need to understand as we see more and more of these things. We need to pray for those who seek our death. Pray for those who persecute us because of our faith in Christ. And be thankful for the many blessings God has bestowed upon this country, upon this world, upon you, upon your household, as we go into that week where we do celebrate Thanksgiving, where we thank God for the many blessings, where we thank God for the troubles, the trials, the tribulations that help to strengthen our faith, that help to bring us closer to God, that help us to lean upon God in a greater way. Did you see this story? Out of World Net Daily, Satanists seek to ally with U.S. Muslims after Paris terror attack. Satanists. The Satanic message, or the Satanic Temple has a message for U.S. Muslims. Let's be friends. American Satanists now want to ally with Muslims. You know, finally we can say there is a group that worships the same God as Muslims. It's not Christians, I guarantee you that. It's Satanists. Birds of a feather flock together. Satanists saying, oh, Muslims, hey, let's be friends. We're good. We're with you. Isn't that interesting? Because understand something, people. Islam is not following after God. Jesus said, if they're not for us, they're against us. Um, wait, did I get that backwards? Did he say, if they're not against us, they're for us? It works either way, I suppose. <clears throat> You see, Islam started when Muhammad thought he saw the angel Gabriel in a dark cave. And this angel brought another gospel. It was one that didn't recognize Jesus as the Son of God, didn't recognize Jesus as the Savior of the world, didn't recognize Jesus as God in flesh. The Quran denies that Jesus is the Son of God. That's Antichrist by nature. The Quran denies that Jesus died on the cross. Again, Antichrist. 
The Quran denies that Jesus rose again from the dead. Everything the Muslims believe go against what the Holy Bible says. They're very anti-God in their beliefs. Jesus himself said in John 3.18, If you deny the only begotten Son of God, you're condemned already. So every Muslim on this planet, with their wrongful theology of denying Jesus as the Son of God, is condemned already, according to the words of Jesus. You can save a condemned man. You see, there was two thieves on the cross hanging with Jesus in the middle. They were both condemned. But Jesus told one of them, Today you'll be with me in paradise because he came to know the truth of Jesus Christ. He accepted Jesus. He said, Remember me today in your kingdom. That's why I preach the good news. That's why I speak against Islam. I'm trying to help save the condemned. I don't hate the Muslims. In fact, I pray more for them than I probably do just about any other group. Out of the Telegraph, Mali Hotel attack, 27 dead with more hostages held at Radisson Blue as third body found at Paris Terrace Lair. Three gunmen believed to be inside the hotel and they've used grenades in Mali. What group do you think they are? Muslims. They're Muslims. All these terror attacks we keep hearing of. I've never heard of any of them being some kind of uh, Jewish extremists or Christian extremists or Hindu extremists. Yeah, I have heard some Hindu extremists. Yes, they're killing Christians in India. But they're Muslims. Islam is at war with the world. Mali Muslims screaming, Allahu Akbar, take hostages and free those who can recite the Quran. Wow. We've seen this happen over and over and over again. How many more of these have to happen before someone finally steps up and says, you know what, no more. They're following after a different God. The Bible's very clear that the world is going to be influenced by Satan, that the world is influenced by Satan. Uh, 1 John, 1 John 5, in verse 19. 1 John 5, 19 says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Satan is deceiving the whole world. Revelation 12, verse 9. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world deceives the whole world deceives you see in Islam Allah brags about being the greatest deceiver of all this is a verse in the Quran I'm constantly baffled by this how can anyone want to worship someone who's a liar in Islam it's okay to lie they even have a term for it takia it's okay to lie to advance their agenda. Who lies? I mean, the Bible says God cannot lie. Lying is one of God's top ten. Long before David Letterman ever came on the scene, God had his own top ten. It's in Exodus 20. Thou shalt not bear false witness. What's false witness? Lying. God says don't lie. Allah says, I'm the greatest deceiver there is. Jesus in John 8 said Satan's the father of lies. Wouldn't the greatest deceiver and the father of lies pretty much be the same person? Deception. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when the 
Disciples asked Jesus, what would be the sign of your return? What will be the sign of the end of the world? In all of those passages, the first thing Jesus said was, watch that no one deceives you. And we see so much deception all over the world today. Those following after the God of this world. Um, where is that? Second Corinthians 4 verse 4, I believe. Am I thinking of the right verse? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world, God, lowercase g, not big G, as in the God, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. There's a reason Paul said, if we or an angel from heaven come to you with any other gospel, may they be forever accursed. There's a reason. Society's been seduced by this cunning deception, the lies. And we've seen human misery, suffering, deceived by the lies of Satan. People have willingly adopted Satan's way of life rather than God's way of life. Proverbs 14.12 tells us there is a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to death. Satan's a deceiver. The God of this world. Huh. The God of this world. One who's worshipped. We've seen the Satanists try to put their statue in several places in this country. And they're teaming up with the Muslims. They worship and follow the devil as their God. Muslims will deny this. They'll say, why do you think that uh, the Quran warns us against the enemy, the devil? Hmm. Most people don't believe the truth of God's holy Bible. Every Muslim will tell you, oh, it's been corrupted. It's been perverted. It's been twisted and changed and translated so many times. It's not even close to the original. Well, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's more than 99.7% accurate, what we have today. In the King James Version, uh, the, the 1599, uh, um, which one is that? Geneva Version. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, the Bible says. We're seeing many perish that don't know Christ. More Muslims have come to Christ in the last 10 years than they have in the last 1,400 years. People, that speaks volumes. More of them have come to see the hatred, the killing, the stealing, the lying, the raping, the terror of Islam. They've witnessed it firsthand. They said, there's got to be something better than this. This can't be of God. And they turn to Christ. Because in Christ, there's forgiveness. In Christ, there's mercy. In Christ, there's grace. In Christ, there's love. In Christ, there's salvation. In Christ, there's everlasting life. Things they have never found in Islam. Out of the Wall Street Journal today, Israel spy. Jonathan Pollard, freed from the United States prison after 30 years. About time. 30 years for charges of spying for Israel. Congratulations, Mr. Pollard. Went into prison in 1985. Could you imagine going into prison in 1985 and coming out today and seeing how different the world has become? Out of Fox News, House approved Syrian refugee screening bill defies veto threat. I loved it that I got to watch them at the House arguing over this bill. Both sides invoking the Holy Bible. Democrats joining the Republicans in defiance of a White House veto threat. This measure passed 289 to 137, representing a veto-proof majority. Now it goes to the Senate, which I believe will also 
pretty much approve it with overwhelming numbers as well. How do you think Obama feels? <laughs> I'll tell you, out of the Washington Post, an angry Obama upbraids critics who want to block refugees from Syria. We don't want to block them, Mr. Obama. We just want to make sure we screen them in the same process that every refugee has to go through. Every immigrant coming into America has a process to go through. Just because you have a pen and a phone doesn't mean you can by bypass this process. He is so angry. He's gotten into heated shouting matches with critics back home. <laughs> oh, he just wants them to flood into America so they can take us down. So they can do away with America. Of course, we have people like Ted Cruz calling for Obama's arrest, saying he should be put in prison for the things he's doing. How is this man still free? Hmm. Obama saying, oh, America's never let refugees in based on their faith. Wrong again, liar. Wrong again. Do your research. Out of Fox News, contrary to Obama claim, U.S. has history of admitting refugees based on faith. Immigration experts gave President Obama Pinocchios for his claim that the U.S. has never used religious tests to determine which refugees get passage to America. Russian and Ethiopian Jews, Armenians... Christians and Catholics from Vietnam have all been moved to the front of the line in previous eras based on their faith. Historians will prove this. Giving one religious group preference is tantamount to sending others to the back of the lines. Certainly there have been policies that said we will consider certain people from certain religions, said Ira Melman, spokesman for Federation for American Immigration Reform. Once again, Obama's lying, saying, oh, America's never done that. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. When Japan started bombing Pearl Harbor, what do you think America did with the Japanese around here in America? They rounded a lot of them up, put them in detention camps. Hello? I think it's about time we bring some Muslim mosques down. I think it's time we take... Some of these hateful Muslims that don't like America's way of life. Some of these people training in these terror camps all over the country. Time to detain them. They don't want to live by Americans' laws, by Americans' way of life. Let's send them somewhere where they'll be happy, where they have Sharia law. When I was a kid, it was America. Love it or leave it. Maybe we need to reinstate that policy. Out of New York Post, Syrian leader says ISIS is already in America. Well, the FBI has told us they're in all 50 states. This leader of New York City's Syrian community told the Post that ISIS terrorists have absolutely sneaked into America by posing as Civil War refugees and joining sleeper cells just waiting to be activated. What do you think they're going to do when they're activated? They're going to start shooting people. Yelling Allahu Akbar. Hey, if you can cite the Quran, we'll let you go. But if you can't, boom, boom, boom. Are you ready? I am. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the persecution. Thank you for those who hate us because of your name. We pray for them. That they'll come out of the darkness their cult was born in and into the light of truth that is Jesus Christ. The true Jesus. The real Jesus. We need to be thankful for the presence of God. In 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. 1 Chronicles. Wow, did I not mark that one? thought I did. Um, 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9 says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart, with a willing mind, for the Lord searches all hearts. He searches all hearts and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. If you forsake the Lord, he'll cast you off forever? <coughs> 
<coughs> excuse me, here we are less than a week away from Thanksgiving. This promise isn't about the bountiful blessings, but the blessings that we find when we seek after the Lord, when we seek God with all our heart, with all our mind. This, this relationship that forms when we trust God, then the blessings start to flow. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> when we have this heart-to-heart -heart relationship with God, when we lean upon Him and less upon ourselves, when we dwell in His presence, there's an, an intimate relationship that is born there, that grows. When your soul lines up, with the Holy Spirit. You see, we're told to worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus said, I am truth. When we step out of this flesh, when we get away from the way this world teaches us, when we learn how to worship God in spirit and truth, there's this intimacy with God. There's this closeness when you draw near to him. When you come to him with all your troubles, your burdens, your sorrows, your fears, and your joys, there's a physical intimacy, the kind that's reserved only for marriage. But remember, we are the bride of Christ. We learn to understand more about God and the very, the very heart of God, and we draw nearer to him, and we we lean upon him. This, this is what he wants. This is what he offers those that seek him, those that cling to him, those who search for him. They will find him. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. In 1 Kings 19, verse 4, it says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. This was Elijah. Elijah. One of the two that we're told about who never tasted death went up into heaven in this flaming chariot. Now, I assure you, at some point on that journey from earth to heaven, his body was transfigured, transformed into spirit, because the Bible's clear, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But he never tasted death, yet went to heaven. It's amazing, but because he had just had this spiritual high where he defeated the prophets of Baal. Maybe you feel like Elijah. It happens. Here he was, he was so de depressed and so distraught that he actually asked God, he prayed that God would take away his life. Do you ever consider that God answered his prayers because he did take him away? <laughs> now, how did Elijah get to this point of depression? I mean, what sets you up for this kind of downfall? Depression can usually come in after a great spiritual high because once you hit that mountaintop, where else can you go but down? Depression hit Elijah after this huge mountaintop experience in 1 Kings 18 when he stood against the prophets of Baal. You know, when, when they were screaming to their God and nothing happened and Elijah said, <laughs> you know what? Okay. You didn't, your God didn't answer your prayer to, you know, light the, the fire here. Uh, just going to show you something. He doused all the wood and the altar with water. <laughs> Said, okay, God, hit it. Boom. Fire. Just, pfft. I've been to the spot where this happened in Israel. It's amazing. It's an incredible view as you look over the valley where you know the final battle will happen. He hit this 
bottom. He he bottomed out right after this. He he fell off his his spiritual high because just like us, we're vulnerable after a great victory. You're tired. Your your guard comes down. You know you've had your guard up, and then suddenly it's ah. That's when attacks can easily come because your guard is not up any longer. You're not watching. That's why the Bible tells us, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Elijah was physically, emotionally, and spiritually drained. So when word came that Jezebel, the queen, wanted him dead, he ran for his life. See, here's the problem. Elijah took his eyes off God. He took his eyes off God. He lost his focus. There's nowhere in Scripture that God told him to run. Nowhere. Elijah took off on his own accord, by his own thought. Oh, my God is big, but here comes the queen seeking my death. I'm out of here. Was here. Not here. He took his focus off God. Don't... Take your eyes off God, people. When you see all these stories of Satan and his followers killing people all over the world who will not follow after their twisted ways, don't take your eyes off God. Don't focus on the enemy. Focus on the one who saves you, the one who sets you free, the one who gave you everlasting life. (laughs) We've all had very emotional, spiritual highs and victories from time to time, I'm sure. But we can't let our guard down. We can't set our sword down. We can't take the armor off. We need to trust God every step of the way, keep our focus on Him, and lean upon His strength. Because whenever you have those spiritual highs, that's when you become... A big target for Satan. Keep that in mind. Some people say, why would God even create people when he knew they would be sinners and and do the wrong things? I mean, in Genesis 6, Genesis 6, verses 5 and 6, says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Ugh! Don't want to ever grieve God at his heart. People aren't victims, okay? God, in his goodness, created a world of moral order where Adam and Eve were free, had free will. He created them in his image, his likeness. God gave them this unique relationship with each other and with him. He walked with them in the cool of the evening in the garden. God entrusted them with this freedom. This freedom included the freedom to turn away from him. And unfortunately, that's just what they did, as millions of people today also do. God knew what Adam and Eve were going to do. He knows what we're all going to do. He knows what people who aren't even born yet are going to do for their whole lives. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows. God doesn't condemn anyone unjustly by causing anyone to sin. God doesn't do that. He's the judge of all the earth, and he's going to do right by everyone. Okay? He doesn't compel people to sin that are made in his image. Nothing can stop his glory. Nothing can stop his grace. Nothing can change his awesome, magnificent goodness. God shows he's abounding in love and faithfulness. Exodus 34, verse 6. Not by leaving the human race in its sin. In Jesus Christ, the Creator graciously became the Redeemer, the atonement for our sins. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross, the way to eternal life has been opened to everyone who turns away from their sins and seeks to follow after Him. John 14, 6. I think John 14, 6 is the answer for all mankind. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God the Father but by me. 
In Matthew 20, verse 22, but Jesus answered and said, you know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, yes, we are able. Baptized, the Greek word is baptizo. You know, this was actually used by Plato in the fourth century to describe a man being uh, overwhelmed by uh, philosophical arguments. It means sponges being dipped in fluid. And um, Strabo in the first century BC used it to describe people who wouldn't swim as being submerged underwater. Even Josephus, the first century um, uh, historian, used the word to describe the city of Jerusalem as being overwhelmed or plunged into destruction by the Romans. Uh, in the Greek version of the Old Testament, baptizo is used to describe Naaman dipping himself in the Jordan River in 2 Kings 5, verse 14. So, from classical Greek all the way down to the New Testament Greek, the name, the same basic meaning has been retained, to immerse, submerge, or to plunge, to dip. Jesus is saying the disciples will need to be plunged into the same suffering that he's going to experience persecution. You see, there's all kinds of forms of persecution. You know, maybe maybe you don't get the promotion at work. Maybe you lose a job. Maybe you're mocked and ridiculed, hated. Maybe you're, you're thrown in jail. Maybe your life is threatened because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Those are all forms of persecution. History shows, though, that the church has always flourished under persecution. So persecution is a good thing. The Bible tells us to rejoice in our tribulations. It, persecution helps increase our focus. It increases our zeal. It increases our trust in Christ. During these intense, life-threatening times of persecution, people's priorities get straightened out. And the Lord assumes his rightful place as top position. This always works for our good, no matter what your out outward uh, circumstances might look like. It helps us to recognize that it's not you they're persecuting, but it's Christ in you that they're hating. Don't take it personal. The other day I had somebody say to me, um, I thought there was something about the light in you that I liked. And I thought, wow, that's, that's awesome that a total stranger recognized the light in me. A total stranger, someone I'd never met, said this to me. We started talking, and um, she said, I, I knew there was something about the light in you. And I was just like, wow, that's, that's great. We do partake in the sufferings of Christ. We will share in his rewards. The Bible's very clear on this. So if you keep this in mind, it can actually help you to <laughs> jump and shout and leap and dance for joy in times of persecution. Malachi 3.6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. The Bible tells us that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's one who never changes, no matter how much mankind changes, no matter how much the world changes. Everything changes. But not God. He's the same. This world changes constantly. Heavens and earth will pass away. They'll perish. There's one who will not change. I am the Lord, I change not. That's, that's assuring to me. He's not fickle. He's not emotional. He, he's not uh, bipolar. <laughs> he's the same, full of love and mercy and grace. He's holy and righteous and perfect. In Revelation 4, how are we doing on time? Revelation 4, let's just start in verse 1. After this I looked and beheld a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither, and I will show you these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, 
and they had on their heads crowns of gold, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Seven spirits of God. And before the throne there were a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind, and the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when these beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. God has no sin. God is perfect. He's righteous. He's just. There's no evil thoughts in him. There's no evil motives. There's no wickedness. And because he's holy and righteous, he's against sin. He's against all iniquity. He truly loves the sinner, but he despises sin. That's why he couldn't look on Jesus when he was on the cross. That's why Jesus shouted out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knew that God turned his face from him on that cross. It's because he had all the sins of the world piled upon him on that cross. And God can't even look upon sin. Heavenly Father's holiness is revealed not only in his moral purity, but also in how he separates himself from all evil. Because of his righteous character, he can't tolerate or ignore sin. He can't look upon it. His injustice requires that wrongdoings be paid for, and the only acceptable payment is death, according to Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death. Only faith in Jesus Christ will bridge that gap between God and sinful man. The Son of God, who had a perfect life, lived a life without sin. He died to pay our sin debt completely in full and provide a way for each and every one of us to have a relationship with a righteous, holy, and magnificent God. You see, the Heavenly Father accepted Jesus' payment for sin, and he invites all people to become his children by trusting upon Jesus as being their Savior. You see, first, people have to acknowledge that we can't pay for our own sins. <coughs> we can't. You can't save yourself. No work can be done to save yourself. There is no works you can do to gain access to heaven. See, this is where most of the religions and cults of this world have it wrong. There's nothing you can do to gain access to heaven because it's what Jesus did that allows you access to heaven. The Heavenly Father said, yes, this is how it's done. We have to confess our wrongdoing, ask God to forgive us based on the fact that Jesus Christ fully paid the penalty for our sins after suffering God's wrath, after suffering God's condemnation and judgment in our place. He was our substitute. God justifies you the moment you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He's the judge of all humanity, declares we're no longer guilty before him. <laughs> he accepted the transfer of our guilt, of our sins, to his son, who was our substitute. We're pardoned of all our sins. We're clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We're made a child of the holy, perfect God. These are the free gifts that God offers once you've accepted Jesus Christ as, as Savior through faith in Him and what He did on the cross, when you give your lives to Jesus, He gives us His life. I don't know about you guys, but I can't think of a better trade. I hope and pray you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life because He truly is the only way to God the Father. Muhammad cannot save you. Muhammad will lead you to hell. The lies of Allah will condemn you to hell. 
Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and he's the only way to God the Father. He said so himself. If you don't believe it, you're calling Jesus a liar. You're calling God a liar. I hope that's not the position you take. God bless you guys. Good Lord willing, I'll see you again tomorrow.